here a few weeks ago and recorded an episode and I didn't really have anything to talk about, you know, and I was just kind of sitting here blabbing, talking about Danger Fest and stuff. So it'd be, uh, this is going to be a much better one because I got all my friends here to bounce ideas off of and just different topics. So um, I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, everybody here, there's eight of us, I think. We got Obtuse, Owen Oldaker, Cody, his fiance, Cher, my girlfriend, Alicia. Hi. One Eye Beaver, Jacob Craycraft, Lauren Dennis, Samuel Bennett. Thank you all for coming today. I really appreciate it. This, this worked out awesome. You know, I think it was like what last week I was bitching about not having people to come throw with me. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, everybody, everybody came at once. Right. Right. But what a good opportunity, to, you know, because I, doing this, I don't really want it to be just me solo. I, I would like to have a co-host. And the one person that I wish I could co-host with is uh, Turkey, Kevin Warbeck. Well, that'd be great. But, because we just, uh, we just gel really well and he know, really knows about knife throwing like I do. He has all the knowledge. So that would be awesome. But he's a you know full-time dad and has a full-time job. So um, that's not really possible right now. So I, in the future, I want to have people, um, you know, I want to have a guest. Like I've done those ones uh, on Instagram where I had Thomas Holtman and that worked out really well. And that's what gave me the idea of starting a podcast. That was a really good video too. It worked out really well. It, the was, audio. it flowed. It flowed really well. Yeah. You well, he's easy to talk to. He is easy yeah. to talk to. He's, you know, he's really skilled, and it was it was really cool. So that's what made me want to do this. So, um, in in the future, if I can't get people to come, because you know, you guys are like the close. Well, you're the closest, and you're an hour and a half away in yeah. Kokomo, right? Where's Kevin? Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's quite a ways job. away. Eleven hours. Yeah. But you can yeah. just do a video. Exactly. We're going to do Zoom. And Alex has got the, the monitor hooked up, just like uh, Joe Rogan. Yeah. Uh, hey, Jamie, uh, pull this up. Yeah, exactly. I said that last time. We were here, uh, I think, was it last Saturday we recorded one? Yeah, yeah. The, the open Saturday. mic. Yeah. That was pretty cool. Pretty uh, e eclectic group of uh, people at that podcast. But um, uh, something I want to do on all the podcasts is... Of course, we don't have a sponsor yet. That'd be cool. Anybody listening want to sponsor the show? Um, but uh, I want to do like a uh, a maker's highlight or something. You know, shout out makers that I like. Who are those? Yeah. So this week, I would like to talk about Lewis Prince Knives. Yes. Um, he helped us out with uh, raising all that money for Marcus Behart to come over here from Sweden. And uh, he makes incredible knives. I actually have... Uh, some stuff in the works with him. He's making a hundred of my um, <clears throat> my new design. That I, the the minis, okay. the little minis, the oh, prototype. That's, that's, oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's nice. I uh, I partnered with uh, Ace from Delta to Alpha out of Canada, and um, we've been working on this since uh, April. Wow. So they're yeah. in heat treat right now. They're going to be laser engraved and yeah. everything. They're pretty sick. I just ordered. A a set of more all for one knives because I like them so much from, yeah. from Lewis and uh, had him dye special colored handle scales for me. Oh, really? What color? Go, uh, purple. Yeah. Because he didn't have purple. It was like the only color that I really want <laughs> other than black. And, you know, we've got the set of black that you guys helped to get us. Which I don't know what you're talking about. I love so much. <laughs> they're, they're fantastic. I was like, I just want more of these. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and they're going to have engraving. So, like, it's exciting. Oh, it's, yeah. It's sick when you get that. When you have something that's like not just plain, you know, yeah. identifiable as. It's as more as personalized as, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what? I can't remember off my hand. It's, is it Prince Steel Knives? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. so. Prince, Prince at Prince Steel Knives on Instagram if you guys want to check out his work. He's been uh, cranking out a lot of knives lately. He's also, I think, exclusively making knives for. Uh, Werner Langmuller, yeah, one of the best knife throwers I've ever seen. Ever, he's probably has more world championships than anyone. I mean, I don't know. That's you've a good question because Mike Bain had him, right? Hmm? So you've seen the photo of his trophy room, right? It's insane. Yeah, it's a full room. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Any time that he would come to the world championship, it was almost like he just had to. He might as well just sign his name. Yeah, on the on the plaques, you know. Yeah, he's got several of the gold cups that were won in Austin World Championships. Kind of bummed those aren't there anymore. But, uh, yeah, what do you guys want to talk about? 
I thought you were going to tell your story I was about last most night. Importantly, oh, everybody you guys want to know that right now? Story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kick it off. <laughs> I'm gonna get pretty fired up. Oh, he's, <laughs> gonna, oh. he's gonna get very fired up. But. Okay. So the only reason I wanted to tell this on the podcast because knife throwing is involved, but I had a wild occurrence happen this Friday. Um, I have a little bit of a past with the law. I've been in trouble when I was younger, and uh, the police in Columbia City are not friendly. They are not cool. I don't ever want to talk to them, ever. I try to avoid them as much as possible. So, uh, I usually work in the shop at Creative Sign Resources. We've been shorthanded lately, so they needed me to go out in the field. So, I worked in Muncie, Indiana, all day, um, Friday. And we didn't leave the job site till after six o'clock. So that means we didn't get back to the shop until 7.30, right? No, you about 7.45. 7.45, okay. So uh, Alicia and I drive home real late. As soon as we get home, the neighbor across the street who watches our house for us instantly calls Alicia and she wants to talk to her. Uh, Alicia gives me the keys so I can go inside. She's telling... What did she tell you? She was telling me um, that a guy was sitting on the porch um, smoking a cigarette between one and two. And um, so I was like, okay. And it takes a minute because she has this light speech impediment. So <clears throat> so I'm like, okay. And I so I was trying to narrow it down. And I was thinking it was our other buddy down the street. And I was like, bigger guy. And she's like, no, skinner guy and dark hair. And I was like, okay. And kind of pointed to my shirt, kind of that color. And I was like, okay. And at that time, I turned to tell Danger. And I just see him with an envelope in his hand, shaking so I, his head. <laughs> I walked up to the door and I saw a note sticking in the door and I read it. And I was on the phone with uh, Ace at Delta to Alpha and I was like, dude, I'm gonna have to call you back. He's like, what's going on? I was like, well, someone was at my house. And this guy, I used to be really good friends with. We actually let him live with us at one point. I got him a job at Creative Sign Resources. Mm. And you know, he's not the, the best friend and has been in trouble. So he's someone that I try to distance myself from. Yeah. Uh, his, his brother is one of my best friends. And uh, his family has always been super cool to me. So I'm like, shit. So I got to do a sweep of the house. I got to make sure he's not in here. You know, so I'm looking at all my weapons and I got a lot of stuff laying everywhere. I mean, I was making sure nothing was stolen. You know, I checked the basement, upstairs, everything. But on the note, <clears throat> it said... My bike quit running due to rain. Give me a call. And it had his name and phone number. So I was like, I look out the, the kitchen window and there's a crotch rocket sitting outside my garage. <laughs> so I walk out there and it's covered with two towels, like brand new purple towels. It's like, what? So I couldn't get out the, the fence because it was right in front of the fence. So I walked around the house, walked back over there. As soon as I saw the bike, I was like, oh, this is stolen. It's all spray painted completely uh, debadged. I couldn't even tell you what kind of bike this was. Yeah. It was a big, it was a full size crotch rocket. So I pull off the towels and I was like, oh, this is definitely fucking stolen. The ignition was all busted out. Okay. And I was like, man, this motherfucker. You know? Dumped this off at my house, of course. Dude, right. I haven't seen him in like three or four years. Wow. <laughs> and so I'm like, man, I tried calling the number. He didn't answer. So I called his brother. I mean, mind you, this is only 10, 15 minutes after we get home. Right. I, I, I'm on the phone with my buddy and I'm talking to him. I open up the front door and I look out. And there's a fucking sheriff sitting there. I'm like, God damn, that was fast. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so I'm like, shit, man. I was like, well, I better just get, a, get in front of this. So I went out to talk to him. He's sitting there on his computer typing some shit in and then he sees me and he gets out. He says, how's your weekend going so far? And I was like, mm, so far, uh, I don't know, man. Uh, are you here to see me? He says, what's your name? And I tell him my name and he says, nope, we're not here for you. We're uh, we're doing something. He's like, I'm just going to be parked here for a little while. Right in the alley, you know, directly in the way. And I was like, <laughs> huh? 30 feet from so the bike. So I... Like I said, I don't like talking to the police. Never told on anyone in my life, but there's a stolen motorcycle in my yard. Yeah, you got it. So I was like, hey, just so you know, I think there's a stolen motorcycle left here. And he goes, well, I'm county. You're gonna have to talk to city police. We'll, we'll, we'll hook you up with them after we do whatever we're doing. 
And at that point I was like, oh, they're serving a warrant. I go to my kitchen window. I look out again. There's like cops walking in between all the houses, you know, they're like, they're all being stealthy. You know, there's a bunch of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Looking for, well, they're looking for someone else in the neighborhood. Um, I ended up finding out it was one of my neighbors, a friend of mine. They got picked up and they, you know, in the meantime, I'm all, I'm all texting the neighbors. I was like, there's cops in the neighborhood. There's cops in the neighborhood, you know, watch out. <laughs> you know, cause I'm cool like that. And uh, so that all went down. They left. Um, then the county guy that I talked to came back with the city guy and he started asking me some questions. He started asking me questions, you know, about where it came from, blah, blah, blah. And then he was like, what's your name? And I told him my name and he goes, oh, you're HTV. And I was like, HTV. I was like, oh yeah, I am. Habitual traffic violator. I don't have a license. It, you know, they took it away from me for life technically. So I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot. But uh, so he starts asking me questions about the bike and I was just kind of laughing like, oh man, I haven't driven a car or rode a bike in you know years. It's been like seven or eight years. And uh, he started asking me questions about the bike, you know, and he's like, uh, I was like, yeah, it's obviously stolen, you know? And I was like, I just want it out of here. And then, uh, so who, who dropped off the bike? Whose bike is it? And I was like, well, I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you his name. I, maybe I should have, but I'm not, I don't, I don't care. He'd get it out of my yard, you know? And he was like, well, it'd be in your best interest if you told us who it was. And then they got an emergency call. There was someone in town trying to kill themselves. So they took off. You know, it's dark now. I'm like, well, I guess I don't, I'll just be out here when they get back. So I set up a light and I was just throwing knives. Well, they came back soon after and it was the same, same uh, cop. I can't remember their names, but um, so he starts asking me all these questions again, grilling me. And then at that time I was like, oh, I'm a suspect now. Mm-hmm. I, I, just came to my, I was like, oh shit. So I text Alicia and I was like, I think I'm a suspect laughing till you're crying emoji face, you know, and she, she thought I was joking. So I'm out there talking with this guy and he was like starting to hound me about who it was. And I'm like, dude, I'm not telling you, I'm not telling you. Then his supervisor pulls up. He's like, I'm going to talk to my supervisor real quick. I was like, all right. So he comes back, starts hounding me again. Look, this bike is on your property. It's now on you. You need to cooperate with us and tell us whose bike this is. And I'm like, sorry, man, not doing it. Not fucking doing it. Next thing I know, there's like five or six guys walked up and then the sergeant comes up and he introduces himself. And I told him, I'm like, I told him the same thing. I wish I could remember everything verbatim, but I, I, I can't, especially because I was so angry. But um, I'm sure obstruction was in there somewhere. Yeah. Something. Well, man. I was like, dude, I haven't been in trouble in a very long time. I just want this thing out of here. You know, you figure out whose bike it is or who stole it or whatever. Actually, they ran the plates and the VIN number and some other guy. And he's like, is this the guy? And he said the name. And I was like, I don't even know who that is, you know. So we're going back and forth. And they kept implicating that it was going to be my problem. And it's like, I was like, are you going to fucking arrest me? Are you going to fucking arrest me, dude? I was pissed, man. I was like, I can't fucking believe this shit. They're all being fucking assholes, man. And I was just trying to do the right thing. And like, if that was my bike, I just would have wheeled it into the fucking garage. I wouldn't have gone and told on myself. Come on, I'd be the stupidest motherfucker on the planet. So (laughs) all this goes down. You know, I, I was heated. I said everything but fuck you right to their face. Because, man, I was just like, I actually even... I even took my knife out because I thought I was gonna go to jail. Like this. Um, So that they didn't like pat you down and be like, what's this? Yeah. Well, if you have it under your shirt, it's concealed weapon. Yeah. But I was on my own property, so it didn't matter. But, um, so they were like, I said, you guys do whatever you need to do. I don't care. And I was just so, I was like, fuck it, man. You know, I would've got it thrown out. The neighbor across the street saw the guy there I was at work all day. Yeah, you had a alibi. If I you're definitely right, an hour and a half away. And the other neighbors yeah. saw the bike there. Yeah. So. Um, so they didn't have nothing on you. No. no. They were so trying I, to shake you. They, oh, they dude, can they were, still mess up your life. Oh yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I've, I've dealt, I've right. dealt with them before, and I don't, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I was just so angry. So anyway, um, they're all talking amongst themselves right outside my fence, and I just walked over and I picked up my knives and I fired off. 
20 of the hardest throws I've ever done in my life, dude. I was just pounding them in there. I did one spin, one and a half, two spin, underhand, half spin, and just, just pounding them in. And they were kind of just standing there watching. I don't know what they thought, but I was just letting off some steam, you know? And then I dropped everything and I went inside and I saw the record came. They were out there, blah, 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 whatever. They went and talked to the neighbor. They did go and talk to the neighbor. Cause I, okay, that was another thing. I was like, you're gonna fucking arrest me over this? Go over there and talk to the neighbor. And I also said, I was like, I have a fucking note inside with his number and name on it. He goes, can we have that note? I said, maybe, maybe you can. <laughs> Not right fucking now, you fucking pricks. That's a good answer. Yeah. 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 yeah oh, that really yeah. made him mad, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so anyway, I go inside, I, I wait until they start to get the bike on the on the ramp. In, oh, in the meantime, by the way, like they had already called the, the the tow guys and they were like standing by the cops, like in the conversation with me. And I'm like, what the fuck are these guys doing here? They wanted to hear it. They wanted well, yeah, sure. I'm sure that's, you know, the, the dirt, what's going on in sound. I mean, I can't blame them, honestly. It's fucking Sure, hard. it's, yeah. yeah. Well, um, would you mind uh, passing me that there, spatula? Yeah, thank you. There you go, man. Um, so. One of the things he said to him, in the heat of the so moment boy. was so he's like you're not going to do anything with this oh yeah you're just going to take it yeah yeah they were pushing the issue i was like it's a stolen motorcycle no one gives a fuck you're not going to do an investigation you're not going to fingerprint it the person that lost it is finally it's going to come and get it and that is it you know so that's why they were mad they wanted to make an arrest or whatever oh, yeah. but um so as they're loading it onto the truck i decided to cut my losses i was going to go outside take down my light put my knives away lock up my garage and just come inside because i'd already you know Pushed it pretty far. <laughs> um, and uh, the, the sergeant comes up to the fence. He says, Brandon, I need to talk to you. I said, nope, I'm good, man. We're done. And uh, he goes, no, come here. I want to apologize to you. And I was like, well, okay. <laughs> all right. So I go over there and he says, I understand your position. You don't want to sell your buddy up the river. If you do have any information on whose bike this is or how we can get returned to them, please let me know. And I was like, oh, wow, that was really cool. Yeah. And then I shook his hand. And then that was that. And I, I'm glad that that transpired and that they could see my position. It, it was just like, you know, they were trying to bully me and all of these guys were younger than me too. And I was just like, this sergeant was, was, they were all younger than me. And I was like, man. So yeah, like I said, the only reason I told the story is because, you know, the knife throwing and you know, I was just, <laughs> yeah. you know, pounding them in there. And it was so satisfying, dude. You know, I didn't miss one knife or whatever, you know. And I wish I wish I would have I wish I would have known what they thought, you know. Uh well, I told him I thought when he came back inside and he was telling me everything that happened because I honestly thought he was messing with me because I heard knives being thrown. So I didn't think they had come back yet. So I think probably what happened is they went and talked to the neighbors and also looked up his accounts on Facebook and stuff, but he just did this shit in the backyard throwing knives like no other. <laughs> yeah. Back, you know, back in the day, there, there was, when we first moved into that house, they had messed with us pretty hard. They were like going through our trash. You know, it was, it was weird. So like I said, I just tried to stay out of trouble. Huh? The cops were going through Yeah, yeah. dude. Yeah. They yeah, were digging through our like, trash, trying to find something incriminating. Yeah. We had expired license yeah. one time and they pounded on the door at like 10 45 at night, knocked bed, books and stuff off Karma's bed upstairs. Like, yeah. She didn't like cops for a long and time. And Karma, yeah, yeah, she was traumatized yeah. by the whole deal. They're supposed to be there to, to protect and serve us. And that. Yeah, and you're fucking with some kid, you know, like right. with their shit, like, you know. Help. And all they did was tag the car and tell me I had 72 hours to move it. Well, that's all they can do. Right. Yeah. I mean, there was no need for it. it it's just, uh, Columbia City is like a, it's, a small town. it's not a city, but it's not a town either. And, oh man, those cops, they, anything that they can go do together, they all fucking jump on it, you know, pounce. Like, a, you know, if someone gets pulled over, there's four cars automatically. Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. you know, anyway, so that's my story. Yeah. And uh, let's talk about something else. <laughs> well, let's Friday leave night. it on cops for a second. So, oh yeah, maybe <laughs> it, it would have been '97, the fall of '97. Now it would have been the spring of '98. This was before Amber 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 Alert. Amber Alert. Yeah. So she had supervised visits, which she never did. She found me kicked in my door while I was in the shower. Took them, got some boxers on. While she had it in reverse, I kicked her right in the nose through the windshield on top of the hood. 
<laughs> and then had to drag my whole leg out. It took like three weeks to get all the glass out. It really sucked. Jesus. So the um, <laughs> she got away, and when I called the police, even like she had no visitation rights. Um, she was coming to steal your kids. Well, she did. She straight up kidnapped them. Really? Yeah. And uh, so after I got off the phone, well, the the police said basically, when you find them, let us know. Call us at a payphone. What? what? Yeah. And we'll meet you there, and then you can follow us to the house. And I had no clue. This is this entire south, well, from downtown to South Kansas City area, I searched for three or four weeks and I finally found him <clears throat> riding in a car with her sister and I followed them to the house so I called the police from the payphone that's what happened she didn't even get arrested she, what? she came out running he endangered all the kids and kicked me in the head through the windshield <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even get arrested Oh, that's wow. how it was before Amber was there. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Crazy stuff. That's wild. So yeah. I have a very much less cool story, but it's short, so I'll go ahead. All right, and see. Go ahead. But it's uh, so I when I lived out in um, uh, bumfuck USA, Ohio, you know, um, <clears throat> I allegedly uh, fired some rounds from a gun. Um, in an area where I guess it's not okay to shoot on your own property. City limits or something? Well, it, it wasn't even that. Like, you know, I, I should be able to shoot a gun wherever the fuck I want to. I, you know, if there's no one around, it's my property. Like, you know, and I allegedly was doing this. And, you know, so they, they show up, you know, faster than they ever show up because they're yeah, bored. Yeah. It's, you know, middle of nowhere. So they show up and they're like, oh, well, you know, we uh, heard some alleged gunfire coming from this location, blah, blah, blah. Someone called it or someone just heard it, you know. And um, allegedly, and then they showed up, <laughs> and I was just like, "Oh, you know, I don't, I, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, um, it must have been some kids fire shooting off fireworks or whatever." And you know, they were grilling me, and I had my little knife throwing target there, and they, I kind of, one of them was like, "Oh, well, what's this?" And you know, I picked up knives and threw them, and I was putting them in their hands and having them throw them, and they changed their tune real quick and left. That's cool. <laughs> nice. That's, it. That's the story. Oh, oh, but oh, yeah. Oh. We we got at least <laughs> hand me a beer, man. Yeah. So um, on the weekends, we used to come to Fort Wayne, and uh, we were afraid of things to do was go to the the parks, and I, I had my pit bulls, and I'd let them run up and down the trails. You know, they're supposed to be on leashes, but whatever, they were really well be behaved, and we'd run up and down the trails. And this was when I was real new to knife throwing, and I was insanely addicted at that time. I mean, that's all I thought about. I threw knives oh, yeah. at work. You know, my boss was like, "Hey, can you not do that here?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> which he's super cool now about it. Because uh, how far I've taken it, but um, so we would always you have. Don't throw knives at work anymore. <laughs> well, I do. Okay. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> um, so we were at Shof Shof Park, and um, decided you know would hang out for a little while and throw some knives. And uh, I can't remember if I had my own ball ground or I found one in the in the woods. Uh, but, that one we had our own. We yeah. Took it out of the trunk. Yeah, and set it up that time. So I set day. it on a picnic table and I was practicing. I think I even was throwing little gill head ins at the time too. <laughs> yeah. That's what I started off with, you know? And uh, just doing some, you know, closer throws back to two spin maybe. And uh, this woman comes out of the woods and she gives me a dirty <laughs> look. <laughs> and uh, I didn't think nothing of it. The next thing I know, there's two cops driving around and they go past us and they come back and stop. And uh, he said, "What's uh, what seems to be?" Or I said, "What seems to be the problem?" You know, they're like, "Well, we got a we got a call about someone cutting down a tree with an axe." <laughs> I was like, uh, That's a far, "No, far but I'm throwing knives at this little log." And uh, they were cool as shit, man. They stood there and watched me throw for 10, 15 minutes, and and that was that. Just some lady trying to cause trouble, you know, exaggerating things. A Karen. Oh, dude, this oh, was Karen before Karen's. Oh, yeah, I had a Karen uh, <laughs> about, well, it was two years ago because it, it came up on the memories when I moved into another spot in Raintree. Uh, the neighbor called the cops on me for, what, six days straight and then blasphemed me on the neighborhood Facebook page. Two of them. I kind of remember oh, that. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Straight up, straight up before Lowick. They, uh, she was calling me a barbarian. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny that 
two people in random countries but, called people dude, the barbarians. Cops came once throwing. or twice every day for like five days straight. Really? See, my neighbor And then is we like ended so up cool. friends. She, yeah, really. Uh, yeah, like, they don't care about you throwing or anything. Yeah, they watch us. They watch us. She'll be like, "That was that was a good one," you know, because <laughs> like if I'm talking to her, I'll be standing around ten meters by the fence talking to her, and then sometimes I'll just throw them and. I'm talking to her, and it was like the first knife I had thrown that day. And it was 10 meters, no spin, just like perfect. What? She was like, that was fucking sick. And I was <laughs> like, that's, that's awesome. Do you have fencing that around a whole property or just part no. of it? No. So, like, uh, the gray fence that you see behind my target and videos is only on that side. On the other side, we have just like a shorter chain link fence that goes around the entire property. Okay, so, so everybody can see in. Yeah, and. I kind of, I kind of don't want an eight foot fence all the way around the whole property, but it's nice behind the target. I mean, like it, it was already there. Yeah. We took down the rickety fence that was there and put up, you know, a much better one. And then we built that whole like backboard thing. That's right. But is that fence yours or is it the neighbor's fence that you're throwing toward? I it's mean, ours. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. And the, the guy that lives over there, he... He doesn't like watch us or anything, but he's really cool about it. I mean, we've had some go over the fence. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he doesn't mind. He's just like, oh, whatever, as long as I don't hit my car. Which sometimes the no spin ones maybe could get close. I yeah, you know, we have that like chicken wire at the top, and I need to figure out a way to like wrap it to the side. I don't yeah. know how I would possibly do that, but that's what I need. Because if they hit the side of the log ground, they just oh, yeah. take off that way. That's when they're the most dangerous. It's the worst. Yeah. Yeah. It's, if I'm like really far away, I won't even throw at that target because I'm worried it's just going to send it straight towards his windshield. And fuck, yeah. God, that would be the worst. Yeah. Well, we've had a few close calls. We've, well, all, we've they... all had close calls. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I have a cool story. Yeah. All right, actually. And it, it involves both of us. I, um, we, we, there was like a day where we haven't had time to record in a while. I think we were, I don't know what online competition we were doing, possibly in games at the time. Yeah. Anyway, so we, we, we finally got down to it. We have all this time in the world. And then this car just like screeches oh up right in front of our house. So like, here's our house, here's our range. And then we have this little, you know, this little path leads from the front to the backyard. And so we see that car in that little opening, you know, so we stop what we're doing because it looked weird. There's just a bunch of kids sitting in there, you know, and who knows what, but like, it was just odd, right? And so out of nowhere, they just all burst out of the car and they disperse. And they just run. They run. So it's like, oh, maybe they stole the car. And so not like a moment <clears throat> after, cops just comes screeching up, his lights are on, he comes out, he's got his freaking gun drawn. We're like, all right, well, shit's going down. And they're like, did you see where these guys went? And we're like... No. no. Oh, I had my GoPro on the whole time. Right. GoPro on the whole time. Because <laughs> like, I was recording my close ups. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and this guy is, he's, he's, you know, anxious about something. He's got the gun pointed at the car, and we're wondering is there someone like OD'd in there? What do these kids do? Who cares? Like, we're interrupting our recording time. And, like, you know, he's asking us where they are, and we're like, well, what do they do? He's like, well, they're real bad kids. I'm like, well, they look like they, they're 15. Yeah, yeah. They, so we thought, well, uh, you know, it kind of seemed a little unfortunate. Like, are you guys just like, you know, what is this, a shakedown, maybe a little profiling? Yeah. Well, it turns out they were wanted for murder. Or oh, something like oh that. Okay. shit. Yeah. They're like, do you see these kids throw a gun anywhere? I was like, yeah. no, man, they went in the alley. I am not watching them. I'm. Doing, doing something. our thing, and so we gave you know we basically gave him permission to like search for a gun around our premise, and we thought you know it's like if you find a gun, just let us know. I'm like yeah, because we're gonna touch that. So right. we thought right. we're gonna look for it, you know, just to make sure it's not in our property. And then we go into the alley, like behind our garage, and as we're going down, like they're like hog tying a couple kids that they caught <laughs> just down the street, like you know, like half a block. So it's just like this crazy chaos. They're just carrying this girl, she's playing around, kids swearing everywhere. at him. You know, and so um, as it dies down and they're searching through our neighbor's yards uh, and we get back to throwing. So he has his gun drawn, right? And he's in the other neighbor's yard and he just turns over and he has a smile on his face like, you guys knife throwing? That's so yeah. cool. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. And, right? and he's just like, you know, he's, I'm just waiting for him to shoot somebody as he's watching us like just being impressed by all this. <laughs> and so finally we get we actually get to record for a while again. They're out of the backyards and all that. But the uh, CSI guy shows up to like you know investigate the car, and instead of doing their job, like as I finally see him, I look over and he's just like, 
<laughs> what you guys doing? That's so cool. And all like, and we're in the middle of the recording. We're actually, you know, trying to make an improvement video. So I just go, shh. Yeah. <laughs> Not now. Wow. That's funny. Did he? Was the camera visible? Did he? Could he see it? Uh, he could. He could see us. Yeah, he could yeah. see us recording. They were just so impressed. I'm like, you guys are here for a like impossible murder. But I guess this is way side than that. Hey, so, you, you could come know. back and. Right, like sure. you, and, you know, you know, on the clock, they come like, and toss a couple blades with us, you know. You know, under different circumstances, Friday night, I would have invited them to learn how oh, to throw yeah. or something. They weren't there yeah. to harass us. Right. You know. Yeah. The, I mean, they were being pretty cool with us. They yeah. Were. I saw a sheriff or a so. deputy <laughs> ice pop out a couple days ago. Um, it's really not that good of a video. When I showed him this and what it's for, <laughs> those are eight games for from Stash. His, his oh, eyes yeah. are like, okay. <laughs> okay I'm, I'm, I'm changing, changing. This. Yeah, go ahead. This may be too deep. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, but, well, I have a, I have a, well, I had a, a, magic, a magic mentor in Chicago, and he was like the, the theory guy of magic. He, he was more into why is magic, what is magic, and, and I started applying this to knife throwing. And maybe, like I said, maybe it's too deep. But what is knife throwing? What, psychologically, why do we do it? I know we're physically throwing a sharpened piece of steel, but what does the knife represent? Chaos, danger, and we're, we're holding it and we're wielding it, we're controlling it. So, so in a sense, I realized that the knife was, was, was fear and what maybe scares us. Maybe not the knife that scares us, but it represents something that scares us or, or scares other people. Because normal people... I was gonna bring this up too, but normal people, you know, they see you guys have all experienced it. They see you throw knives and and they're like, ah, you know, people that recoil, they're like, and then you're like, no, 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 they're not sharp and asshole, you know. <laughs> it's one or the other. Yeah, they really yeah. like it or they don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and uh, and the, the intimidation factor. But uh, what what I thought to myself, what what is knife throwing like psychologically the core of it? And I I feel like it's 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 for me anyway. Uh, that feels logical to me. It's it's fear. It's 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 chaos. It's 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 a uh, you know controlling chaos. It's it's, con it's it's controlling chaos. It's it's holding on to the dangerous thing, making it do what you want, and and and, and your will, and, and throwing it precisely. So it's a way. It's it's controlling your fear. It's, it's beautiful facing danger. No, I thought about it like that. I like that a lot too. And you know, I I'm you know the kind of person that thinks about things kind of in the same sort of direction and for me you know it started as just like meditation is what i'd call it because i'm the kind of guy that likes to spend a large amount of times by myself pacing back and forth just thinking about random stuff so obviously that fits right in with throwing because that's essentially what you're doing with yeah. just you know you throw it and you go and you walk and you grab it and you walk back and you know uh and then you know i kind of I don't know. It's just uh, it, it kind of became for me just a representation of myself because it's such like this misunderstood thing. And like, I just want to understand that and I want to understand more about myself. Maybe that's why I'm doing it. I don't know. That's cool. Seems like a lot of the people in, in the community are sort of more like the alternative People yeah. that like al alternative things anyways, you know, like none of us oh, for sure. play yeah. soccer, football. Really. That's, That's a good, good point. point. Yeah. yeah. There are a few. My name is Jacob, and I'm a knife holic. <laughs> 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 Thank you for my time. <laughs> that would have been perfect. Yeah. Well, maybe. I don't think technically anything I throw could be considered a knife. You you don't throw knife shapes. No. You know, that was a big controversy a couple years ago. Yeah, I don't. Um, right. Well, yeah, like uh, I'm planning on going to Europe next year and I'm going to have to choose a new knife. I think that they just changed it. If they just change it, then we're golden. I think that um, they did. But so, I don't honestly, there's nothing I have that I would consider a knife. Even if you were to put a sharpened edge on it, it doesn't have a an integrated handle. It doesn't have a guard. It doesn't really have a some, something you consider a blade. Yeah. It's a pointed piece of metal. Um, well, if you look up the definition of what a knife is, it has to have a yes. cutting edge. Right. And that's what was my... <laughs> That's what my uh, argument was going to be back when I was put on probation. I wasn't supposed to throw anymore, but you can't. You can't reason. It's not a knife. It's you know. Oh. It's you know it doesn't forks. matter. Well, you can you can have kitchen knives, but you can't throw them. I don't know. It was stupid. They have to have utility. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a you can have a chainsaw. Is that the yeah. European rules? It, yeah, it was a little controversy a couple years ago, and it almost looked like they were trying to ban the arrow. Yeah. Yep. Because everybody was too good with the arrow type, which 
okay, if you want to get technical about it, then we're going to have to have two separate groups where Bo Shuriken and I don't know, I'm not even sure. What would you call an arrow? How, what would you even classify that as? A tepin shuriken, which is a flat steel stock shuriken. He's put some thought into that. It's yeah. <laughs> I, I, you know, like I said, I, I think about I think I think about this a lot. Yeah. You know, so Where's um, your it's notepad. At? I don't have one. It's right here. I, I can't. I can't write. I just tried to write Instagram on a piece of paper and misspelled it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I don't remember the last time I took a pen to a piece of paper because it. Oh just, really? I mean, honestly, no. Uh, I mean, well, that might be drastic. Of course, I remember the last time I did it, but like, I don't, that's not something I do. You don't jot down notes or anything? Uh, in my phone, I'll do it in my notepads in my phone. Yeah. Uh, and I never will lose those because when I get a new phone, all my saved files will go to the next phone. Nice. So, um, I'm sorry, Teppan? Teppan, T-E-P-P-A-N. And I, you know, that's a traditional Japanese word translated into English. And I'm always kind of iffy about trying to pronounce those things because it's like, I don't know. Uh, I haven't been to Japan. I'm not educated. Right. That's So uh, that is my, you know, nerd that's read a lot of stuff but never heard it pronounced out loud sort of uh, take on it. And it's uh, the flat steel. So there's like the bow shuriken and stuff that, you know, came from square stock or were usually just carpentry nails that were repurposed or yeah. like the masuba guitar. Once again, a word that I'm not really sure if I'm pronouncing it right. But that is how I've heard it said, actually, from Iga Tengu. And um, it's a tepin shuriken because it's a flat steel thing. And so technically, like, you know, a ninja star, quote unquote, for people, you know, that is also another type of tepin shuriken. Uh, and, yeah, uh, I've seen that word. Or like the... Um, There's your... Uh, yeah. Right. There you go. He's pulling it up right now. And so that's... Uh, yeah, exactly. Tepin shuriken, if you yep. can see. Those are all... Those are, the they're flat. Thing. They're made from flat stock. Um, and so, you know, flying, all flying steel knives... Our tepin shuriken, the ones that are technically knife shaped, that would be considered knife by the European throwers, that is a uh, tantugata tepin tantugata, shuriken. Yep. And uh, so, you know, there's all sorts of little, very specific words for these things. Yeah. Um, and the Japanese have words for. They do. They have. They have words everything. for. They have words for it's really common. specific feelings. Like, you know, they have a word for your addiction to collecting books and not reading them. You know what I mean? They really do. I don't know what it is off the top of my it's head. Like the but, Germans, um, <laughs> right? It's it's you know because it's not a romantic romance oh, language based shot thing, shot so it's food. it's different. Um, All technical, huh? Interesting. Um, <clears throat> the only person that I've ever seen throw shuriken well in competition and you know like win where it would be a, a thing was Taylor Hall. Oh yeah. My old friend. I mean he destroyed that year. It actually it was a uh, uh, absolutely destroyed yeah, that year. It was um him and Adam Chelladine back and forth the whole time. Well uh yeah I was um, him. Travis Deshaun was uh, he was third place so he was up in there but those guys were just yeah uh ahead of everybody else and but it never became a thing. Like it yeah. just depends on <clears> what what's comfortable to you. It's not like this is better than that. You're all doing the same thing. You're throwing a piece of steel from the same distance. So. Are, are the shuriken allowed in most competitions? I know I've seen like Brandon McElfish throws those javelins. Yep. And, but he kind of puts a handle type yeah, that doesn't right. help anything. Yeah. It's not. Too, it's just his Taylor preference. Taylor did too. Yeah. Taylor did too. It's just personal preference because it's more of a push throw. Right. It's off your fingertips and your palm throw. The traditional style of uh, both shirt and throwing, which you can throw them uh, with your finger on the edge, just like a knife too. So. I think the disadvantage for shuriken versus the more like knife style no spin knives is, uh, the size. Yeah. The. Yeah, like little pencils, so if you're going to miss the bullseye, then, like, if your aim's not fantastic. You can't cut into the other point. Yeah, 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 you can't just barely get that higher ring, as, you know, with something. Yeah. It's got a, so at least a little bit. in some ways, bit. you have a disadvantage with the shark. Exactly. Yeah. It, so, yeah, like a, a I think Alamo. that's maybe why people don't throw them as much. Right. It's hard. Maybe. It's it's hard. I, I mean, I can't throw the big ones like Brandon does. Um, they always over-rotate on me. I can half-spin them. You, you slide you slide your shuriken, right? Yeah, the awesome. small awesome. ones that rest all around my palm. I mean, my fingertips are at the tip of it, and yeah. then they slide all the way out with a, sure. wrist, a wrist fan, you know? But with the big ones, it's not a wrist fan. You know, you take it all the way back. It's a huge push. And you go straight forward with it, with it balancing on your fingertips, and it, it just leaves your hand yeah. very cloud-like, you know, and it's just not my... I can't do it. Suck at it. Just personal preference. Right. So. Cloud-like. Cloud like cloud throw exactly <laughs> nice and lofty and yeah. A while back, I remember uh, Alamo Mike Bainton or someone pointed. I think it was Alamo 
said, well, why don't you just throw bigger bowies? You have better chance of, uh, you know, hitting more points. With a big bowie, you can hit the five, the four, and the right, three. Yeah. Right, yeah, right. Um, but, and I was throwing uh, Griffins, and he always jokingly called them tent stakes. <laughs> but it's just what I like. It's just what I throw with. And yeah. you're right, I might not get that extra point, but it's just what I'm comfortable with. And, right. Well, yeah, Ace has had a fun game where if you, you're – there was – trying to get two lines at the same time. Oh, you were trying to do it? Yeah. <laughs> so you can get double the points. Is that what straddle the line is? But, so in practice, they said I, I could use the cleaver. But Really? The, yeah. So, That's a big so advantage. So the second time I tried it, dude, I got the bulls. I got the bullseye all the way down to the second. All the way face. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I tried, but it was a totally different target. It was totally different wood. And it just went boop. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's wood. it's actually hard to do that with a cleaver. Hit it completely flat. flat the one flat I was practicing yeah. on was an old log, especially so, if the log round is used. Yeah, because all those fibers start no, to crisscross, yeah. and it really one, yeah, it stuck with the used one. That's but with the new one, no. Interesting. Was no, that it's in, too much? Well, was that in Vegas or was that? That was Texas. State? No, was that Texas State or it was, it was either Texas State or the last uh, Blade Aces throw? Yeah. It Signal. must have been Blade Ace because they come up with weird games like that. Mm-hmm. But did you win your championships? Although, Bullseye Seekers? So the okay. Hanley's. The, the, they come up with the some fun that games. Hanley's come up with some fun games too. Really? Yeah, you should make one of those. Different than, I mean, like card games or cop yeah, games? Yeah, it's different every year. Every single. Well, yeah, every year it's they have different. Nothing's really the same except for maybe a clock. But. It's two two days of games on a high and low round from one to, well, you do do a one and a half hawk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of uh, events and throws coming up, I got a list of things right here. If anybody uh, is interested in going to a throw, August 6th, 7th, and the 8th is the good, the bad, and the aces hosted by uh, Blade oh, Aces. Yeah. Melody and uh, Ron. Um, then August 21st and 22nd, the Swedish Championship. Um, Arboga, <laughs> Sweden. Yeah. And then August 22nd, 2021, Throcella, hosted by uh, Bo Tate at Valley Axe in Sarnia, uh, Ontario, Canada. September 18th, 19th, and eight, September 17th, 18th, to 19th is Danger Fest. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pearson, Indiana at the number one stop bait shop. Hit me up if you want any info on that. Explain the, to the folks at home what Danger Fest is. It's a knife throw. <laughs> Danger Fest is something. Okay, good, good question. So, I was obsessed with knife throwing even more than I am now, then it seems like, but I went to my first knife throw. It was uh, Joe's, and then I went to the World Championships in 2014. And Everybody that would come over to my house, I would just stick knives in their hands and I'd just get them throwing. And my ultimate goal was just to get everybody to be able to stick knives so we could play games and have fun. Um, so I, I was always going to all these throws. After that, it's you know, I was going to the World Championship and you know, Joe's and I would just wanted to go to every one I could. Well, not everybody is everybody likes knife throwing, but not everybody loves it the way that yeah. we do. So I started having little tournaments in my backyard, you know. Yeah, for the, all the, the local people that I got interested in it because they weren't really into it. They didn't want to spend money to go and travel and whatever. And it's, it can be a little expensive. You got to take time off of work and all that stuff. So the first two years we did it in my backyard. And then Taylor and Rose, Rose bought a house and we moved it over to their place. I think we did that one year there. Yeah, that was the first year Paul and Chris came. Yeah, and I think... Yeah, that's the following year is when... Uh, Kowalski announced it at Broken Feather. Oh, yeah. And then we moved it to Taylor's then parents' it, Yeah, because house. it got too big. It got, you know, it got too big for our yard almost immediately. Yeah. And then we moved it to Rose and Taylor's. And then Taylor's parents have a property outside of Columbia City that it worked perfectly. We had it two years there. Then we got too big. And, and uh, Lauren. Yeah. Yep, that's that was in 2018. Yeah. Right? That's Your first throw. Yeah. Yep. Think and first throw too, right? Dead last. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, getting your own private range right. at the back of the barn. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it was already there, and yeah. I just went over there because I came up. I came in so late because 
Yeah, you did come a day late, right? Uh, and like halfway through the competition. So. Oh, did you? Yeah, it's yeah. all good. As long but as you can show up, it's but cool. But that's the thing about Ninja Press that we always implemented was, for that reason, is everybody gets to participate. Everybody. Regardless. If yeah. you're coming late, you just let us know you're coming late, and we'll Continue. still get to compete if you want to compete. We wanted it to be friendly for everybody. And yeah. We're trying to keep the cost down as much as possible. We didn't even charge until 2018, but, you know, right. it started to get a little bit bigger and we needed to. We need to get porta potty and, yeah. and food. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then it got big and my dad and I really get along now and it's awesome. And he offered to hold the throw at his bait shop in 2019 and we did and it was huge yeah. and very stressful for me. <laughs> but uh, it was it was fun. It was a lot of, it was worth it. And then last year, you know, COVID happened. We weren't sure if we were gonna do it. And uh, we went ahead and did it anyway. And a lot of people showed up, it but awesome. none we of the going. Canadians could come, no one from Europe. So there was a lot of people that didn't come that it was, we had a good time, but it was just a different vibe because the normal people weren't there. You know, I'm used to seeing. Well, somebody was supposed to, who was supposed to come last year? No, Marcus, well, it was gonna be right? Marcus P. Yeah. Hart, yeah. but. We didn't had to start postpone. Because of yeah. I wanted to get BMO to come. I wanted right. those two, but BMO's not comfortable with uh, Lo Lo leaving his family. Leaving his family yeah. And yeah, and Lo I understand that. Epic in yeah, Loic, we have raised money for yeah. Loic in yeah. 2019. Yeah. That was great. Yeah, he's yeah. he's fantastic. And he's going to be coming back. He just doesn't think he can make this year. Yeah. But. Well, he's also a, he's not going to get the vaccine, so we'll see how that plays out. Right. So this year, Marcus is coming, and we raised $2,700 for him. And he's vaccinated and can and come from Europe, but I didn't realize that U.S. It's said US that we can't accept people from Europe is what he told me. Yeah. I didn't know that. So, so it's kind of up in the air right now. Well, currently the U.S., unfortunately, Canada opened their borders. However, the U.S. extended the borders being closed through uh, Canada and Mexico right now to August 21st. So it's literally... It's going to be down to the wire if we can get the Canadians yeah. to come. And I hope they, they do because they're... So I, would, cool. I would think if he has a loophole, to if he has Canada, some sort of business through knife throwing, that he could claim it as business and then it might slip through. So. I don't know about Europe. I've got a, Well, if if anybody here doesn't have a knife throwing business that you can deduct everything you do, yeah, you need to. Wow. Lewis does. <laughs> but I was going to say, if there are a lot of people from Canada here taxable. at the end of August, couldn't Marcus go to Canada and then come down here from Canada? It's a possibility. Right. right. That might be. Yeah. Right. Because if yeah. you know what I mean, like if Canada is allowing people from. Yeah. There he goes. Uh, nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a big fat no. Uh, he, is <laughs> he, he is vaccinated, Alex. Yeah. Um. Uh, but I mean, yeah, that's something to think about. I don't know the, well, the ins and outs of actually, that. Because he's going he's for a week down in the damn pit. <laughs> so they could probably <laughs> run that business he's idea. Awesome. He's such a legend. Yeah, I do. They're going to be doing business. Have to the California border. I mean, on the other side. <laughs> yeah, we'll pick him up. Yeah, so anyway, uh, Danger Fest has grown and grown and grown. This year, we're expecting 100 throwers. Mm. And... Uh, you know, I have so much shit to keep track of. I have a giant or dry erase board in my kitchen. <laughs> Just <laughs> well, we're about to see. And um, Sam and Lauren's wedding is on the dry erase board. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I'm well, so yeah. glad you guys are going to Which is yeah, let's, talk now, about, let's talk about that a little bit. Which is uh, now less than two weeks. Yeah. yeah. It's like a wow. week and a half. Got it. Uh, I was going to try and make desserts, but right. I'm going to have to work all week, so I ordered oh, really? some don't, don't cakes. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Don't oh, well, I, I ordered cakes from a place that I like a lot. I'm excited. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what, what time? I need to know because Alicia and I have to work a half day. Yeah. And we have a four-hour drive, so. It's, it's around five. So, you know, we're going to do the throw all day Friday, and then uh, it's going to be either I need to talk to her about like the specific timeline if it's before or after the meal so you know on Friday and Saturday there's going to be meals for everybody and yeah. that she's cooking and we're, we might we're going to be try pushing right at 5 okay it's like 4 hours yeah. and 23 minutes I can just take put it off we will post so, that until you arrive yes. <laughs> pushing right at 5 maybe a little it just depends traffic and if by the yeah. time I get off work and get to him and 
No, we understand that completely. So yeah, I I imagine that uh, we have some family coming. Yep. Not a yeah. lot of twenty mm, ish people, some oh, friends shit. and family that wanted to come. Cool. And uh, so we might have to wait for some of them anyways. But do we need to get some seating? No, I think Melody's taking care of it. She's that freaking awesome. Yeah, really. she is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she does. Very awesome. She does so much like for the community, but like. I feel like behind the curtains and like people yeah. will, people will never people yeah. will never realize there are she has people. given to well Kelly yeah. Grove is another one that comes to mind John Grabowski and John Grabowski yeah. people who really who really they don't want Marcus. you know they don't want the stuff in their face but they they do it and they they put it in it because they love it and that's the best part about going to these throws is you know you see like online is a completely different game. There's so many people, you know, this and that and the other of, of either judgment or egos or whatever. But you go to yeah. these throws and it's not anything like that at all. Like I went to my first throw physically shaking yes, when did. I went up to throw because I was so nervous because I yeah. thought it was just this way more competitive thing than I was. Nah. Because that's kind of how I had it. it was stewing in my mind, you know. But no, you go there and uh, I think every throw since then has been like, yeah, it's chill, you know. Wait, you uh, don't shake anymore? I, I don't shake. Nervous. It's only as serious you as you take it. Shake. It is. It yeah, is only as... Trick. You know, I, <laughs> I didn't... I, okay, I didn't shake at uh, Broken Feather because, well, John Grabowski is a big teddy bear sweetheart and he was scoring me. And he was like, uh, hey, Jake, so would you like to come up and throw? <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, and I was like, yeah, you know, uh, sure, John. I was a little bit nervous, but he kind of, he talked to me a minute and he got me in a good state of mind. And, you know, that's what the community is about. It's about supporting people and not like you know, fucking around and, yeah. and making people yeah. nervous and, and making them feel this or that way. And um, no. I'm glad you said that because yeah. anyone listening to this that is uh, on the fence about coming to a throw, just come. It's not, mm -hmm. it, we, it's a competition, but it's not. It's right. not. It's, it's a no. personal competition. It's a competition with yourself. Try it to is. get better than you did. It There's is. no one's out there talking shit. No. Or any, and, you know, the only thing that I could even remotely say that we're competitive with is fast draw. And yeah. it's all, it's all, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's, all, it's all in good fun, man. Yeah, it's, it's all, all it's all cool. Fun. And yeah. no one, no one cares how you do. I mean, if you do great, then you do great. And everyone's yeah. going to be like, hell yeah. Every but, day is different. Or every day is different. And then we play little stupid games and this and yeah. that. And I, I do have a lot of people hit me up and I'm like, you know, you know, if you want to learn how to throw, you want, uh, you know, the crash course, you know, you know, six months of progress in three days come to a throw. And it's because yes. there's going to be so many people that's going to be able to teach you or show you this or that. You're going to be able to watch people in real life and see, you know, what's going on in the mechanics a yeah. lot better than you're going to be able to see through, you know, a single lens, little closed sensor, you know, phone camera. Like, it's not going to be the sure. same at all. And, and, you know, people always say the same thing, you know, I don't think that I'm at a comp competitive level. That's not, that's not even a thing. Why yeah. it is it now? It's it not even a thing. It's no. not even a thing at all. Um, no. And, uh, you know, you, you will almost certainly surprise yourself if you show up. Even the world champions are super cool and humble yeah. and are willing to help anybody. It's, it's all about sharing information, passing on the sport of knife throwing. And uh, one of my favorite yeah. things is pe people that have the nuts to show up and stand on there and uh, score a 20, a 40, and then come back the next year and score a 80. I think Michigan and then show up the next has year and do a one fifteen. Oh yeah, like, yes, that's one of my favorite things. I remember yeah. one of the first one, the first time I went to Broken Feather was it or was it might have been Danger first Danger Fest. I had to wear headphones. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. 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 I think I saw you. I wasn't headphones. used to the clanking. Of oh, everyone you, else you throwing, were, you were throwing yeah. by yourself yeah. up yeah. until then. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a different thing. You got to get yeah. used to it. Yeah. yeah, you do got to tune everyone else out. That's a big part That's of it. Curry. It's hard. To you got to movement outside. Yes. My relax danger, your shoulders yeah. right here. Just relax. My first danger fest <laughs> I got out of the van with uh, <laughs> yeah, Dan, uh, uh, Jason had the van at that time. Yeah, got out. I was so excited to throw. I got out. I threw like seven knives in the dirt, like three or <laughs> four feet in front of me. But the target, uh, I was at three spin. It was just going, yeah. sticking was, to your hands. I was like, Brandon. And fucking uh, Taylor was there. And it was a two two or three day trip, actually. God, I was so excited to throw. Couldn't let go of it. It's all good, man. <laughs> I did that at Broken Feather this year. Once it was very like I've never thrown knives before. Like in the first two rounds, they were in the dirt. Yeah, what that's how like? that's how yeah. competition feels sometimes. But it's you'll just have part like of round. it. You're going to have some good times, and you may have some bad times. But not one person. My point in that is, not one person 
put me down. Not one person made fun no. of me. Not absolutely. Not. No. I mean, that's my no. point. Is it's just all about people are trying to teach. It doesn't matter if you've just thrown knives one day or not even at all. Like, absolutely. This is I've never heard a giggle. Of. They hold those giggles yeah. and they just <laughs> want you to stick one. And then yeah. when they finally stick one, they're clapping. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's very excited. Supportive. It's awesome. Yeah. Very encouraging. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. I've trained thought. I lost it. Well, I was going to say, even the people that are at the top, you know, quote unquote, that go to these competitions are going through the same thing you're going through. They're just as nervous. Like, you know what I mean? Like, well, like, like I remember you told me, like, I think when I went to the Michigan Throw Storm, which was my first competition, you're like, you know, it's never changed for me. Every time I go up there, I'm nervous as hell. Yeah. Um, and that's just how it is, you know? Yeah. I mean, hell, I think it's gotten worse. It's gotten worse. <laughs> I think a lot of people probably, like, specifically watch you. It sucks. Sorry, if, the, if me sucks. pointing There's that some, out makes it worse. No, just at all. Florida I, I just, State. Florida State. I got them. I got them in Florida State. Oh, thanks for bringing that up. And yeah. It, like, <laughs> it's an amazing feel. Like, yeah. I had an off day. <laughs> I had an off day, and I you were killing. Had, hadn't been using lines. I haven't had a range in two years. Yeah. And that was a challenging throw. So, yeah, it was. It was fun, though. I told you. Too I'm bad they didn't get us, man. Yeah. I, I, I think this year they will. Lines. I've been stepping it off for two years. I might not be there this year. Really? Yeah, maybe. Oh, I don't know. Come on, man. Uh, a good why, Florida, he, he, he'll let that, he'll, just because of the, no. the type of person he is. No, no, no. I don't no, care. No, I don't care. No. You know what? You can't You can't say anything that's going to shake me, honestly. Like, that's how I feel yeah. about it at this point. That's um, what I like about you. Um, I got to use the bathroom over here. Got to yeah. talk about yourself. So. Um, <laughs> and, uh, no, it had nothing to do with, uh, with Doc. In fact, he was incredibly hospitable. You know, we sat down and smoked a cigar and you know obviously he's this rough older guy i think he's a vietnam war vet you know etc cetera, etc cetera. um but he's uh he was cool and uh, i had a good time but i just was upset with the targets that they had they literally took the end grain targets that they had from last year what? and they filled them full of plaster like drywall yeah. plaster they did. They filled these fucking targets full of drywall plaster to, to redo True them. Story. And <laughs> we, and then just layers and layers of just Rust-Oleum paint, you know. And then we were throwing at him and practicing. And he's like, all right, don't do it too much because you're going to tear them up. And oh, for sure, we were hitting these, these targets and just hunks of plaster were fucking falling out of them. And I don't know if you've tried to throw a knife at plaster. You mm -hmm. got to throw it fucking hard and it better hit perfectly square. I feel like so. hard targets <laughs> are a specific type of challenge. I figured it would yeah. just crumble. It was crumbling. It was crumbling, it was crumbling and it was yeah. it was dry. I mean, it was Florida, so it was. But a, these targets, he also lets people people stop by and throw for free while he's not there. It's yeah. open to the public, so he can't go out there and change them every month. Yeah, he was spray so. painting in the middle of the competition. We spray painting the lines because pieces were crumbling out, and then you had over spray because he didn't put a stencil on it, and uh, it just it, it could have been put together better. And I figured it would be, you know, traveling also a from free competition. It was with a free cash prize. It was it well. I mean, <laughs> it was a free competition, and but I mean, I came down from Cincinnati to to Southern Florida, like, and it was cool. Like, hell yeah, it was uh, it was February. Like, I get me out of Ohio, please. It's cold and it's rainy and and snowy and sleet and everything awful, you know. So I you know, I was just flying to hang out in Florida at the the family farm petting zoo and I hung out with this pig. <laughs> the pig was cool as hell, dude. I got a nice uh, picture of you with yeah, with turtles. the pig. No, with the turtles. Oh yeah, with the turtles too. I had big salcata tur tortoises, you know. Probably rehoused from someone, you know, purchasing them thinking they're gonna stay cute and small and then they're digging holes in their yard and shit and then right? you know. Um but it was it was a cool time. Like I'm not gonna say it wasn't a cool time but uh you know, as far as it wasn't, I wouldn't say that was a serious competition, you know. Um, but it was a lot of fun, you know. I, I had a lot of fun. Doc was a cool guy. I had nothing to do with him as a person. He's not, uh, you know, everybody's cup of tea, I'm sure. He's definitely a big-ass personality. Like, Oh, I love him. They, oh, he's hilarious. He, I love Doc. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Uh, it was a good time. I, like I said, Florida, you know, in February when I live in Ohio, hell yeah, I'll go to Florida for anything. That's yeah. not what it is. Yeah, it's actually January. It's and, January. Well, the, the thing that's kind of conflicting this year is I already told Doc that I was coming back because I had such mm. a good time. It was a cool, cool vibe. I love, you know, it was on a petting zoo, yeah, private property. Just talking about the pig. Bunch yeah. of bunch of random animals running around, you know. Constitutionalists. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> I didn't even realize there was a camera. Yep. <laughs> There's several. Oh, <laughs> but um so the, the problem is uh stash stash moved to puerto rico yeah and he's doing one of yeah yeah when did he move to puerto rico uh, a few months ago about yeah, six yeah. months ago okay, or something. so it's a new thing okay because yeah. i felt dumb i didn't know and, yeah. stash is one of the coolest people i've ever he's met i thought he went there for vacation and decided 
Uh, I'm not sure. I think that no. he planned on moving. Yeah, he uh, planned on moving. He, yeah. It, it, was a, it was hard to get his dogs in. Uh, oh, yeah. He planned um, on a while before. But he's having, a, he's having a throw on Valentine's Day. Yeah. So, yeah. And he can only have, host so many people, so it's invitation only. And I really want to go, but, you know, like this year, this year is the most throws I've ever gone to. I usually only go to Broken Feather as a must. It Andrew is. Andrew Fest is a must. And then I try to go to one other thing if I can, but having only so much vacation time from work and just time, it's, it sucks. Like this is the most throws I've ever done ever you this year. You don't get the uh, sick days, like uh, emotional uh, sick days. <laughs> Mental health days. Mental health days. I, Mental health. I, I that's why y'all need to. That's why y'all need to get that union job. Man, I I told by actually, what it's really, what it really is. I have a really good job. I'm very thankful to work for who I work for, and they probably would let me go whatever I want. Man. I just don't like to uh, push it too far. You know? start yeah. looking at those tickets. Yeah, I know. I get that. I get well, that. But it's uh, also money. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yes. I am yes. Somewhere. And that was another thing about Danger Fest. We always wanted to keep it as affordable as possible. Yeah. But as things get bigger, I have to charge a little bit more because we're expecting a hundred throwers can. this year. But we don't, don't have a pro division either. Everybody pays the same. I don't because it's just, I what? mean, by the time you had travel and some people stay in hotels what? and I mean, Search. two people for $50, $100, you can, most people can swing that and camp. So you can say $50 just or gas. whatever. Like, that's pretty much what I did. And so, but you go too much higher and then you're starting to add in two for two people. You're up to like 200 bucks. Then, you know, gas. And if you do a hotel, I mean, it just gets to be a thousand dollar trip when you yeah. close your eye. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's why you gotta have a tent. Do you do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like I, I couldn't, I couldn't go to these things if I didn't have a good tent because you know I couldn't pay for a hotel. Like, right. That's where the real money comes out. But um, you know, when you pay for the competition, you do at least one meal usually. Yep. Right. Um, I know what was it? Patrick was that his name? <laughs> Who was that? The guy My was, friend John. John. Okay, cooked for John. Us. Yeah. John. My I best friend. Patrick for someone. He was. He was hilarious, dude. He was. Yeah. He's great. He was. Yeah. He's. He's great. Um. Actually, I just got. We. I didn't want to put that on him again this year, especially mm. for a hundred people. Plus, he's been working out of state. I didn't yeah. really want to have him do that. So my dad actually texted me today that the food truck that we had in 2019, which was fire, it was right? Good. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it was we can't cheap. get it. He's he's booked. He's booked. Right. Uh, so, but there's other <laughs> options. We just got to find another food truck. Yeah. yeah. So no. and he, uh, my dad texts me. He's he's got he's at a poker game right now, and what I think he's making some connections. Bonus. What's that? Maybe if we gave him a bonus, he's already booked. If man. he's already committed. Yeah, if he's, yeah. he's made yeah. a commitment because somebody he. Their business is there by their word, though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but food trucks, if they say that they're doing an event, you they're don't doing want an event because otherwise you get bad mouth and it can shoot your reputation yeah. down. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's a, it's so nice having that food so, truck there because anybody, you know, you can eat throughout the day whenever you want. It's always yeah. there and it was really, really good. Can you use your taco truck? That is what taco I like truck. to do. <laughs> yeah. Tacos. I mean, Everybody likes tacos. I oh, see yeah. buses. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll stop. No. We're working on it anyway. <laughs> so that's one of the things we are currently working on yep. to figure out that next thing. We are doing six porta potties this year and nice. two for women. Nice. nice. Yes. So, one in the front. One in the back. One back. So that's, I'm doing three I mean, and three. You know, for the women, there's going to be three and three. They yeah. did that for a, a room for the head of a yeah. couple women. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was nice. Yeah. It um, was nice. They, they, underestimated, <laughs> sure they was. underestimated uh the number of people this year. Yeah. Nice. I heard that yeah. the men's toilets got a little full yeah. at the yeah. end there. Uh, but yeah. you know, it's it's yeah. really nice for the women not to go into a like porta potty that's got really, really right. pee yeah. in various places. <laughs> right, right. True. Hey, it's hard to aim, right? I, yeah, that's it's fine. To it's <laughs> totally fine. I suppose if you're fine with it. It's just if no, you have to disgusting. put your finger. I don't care who you are. I've been a germaphobe since I was probably eight. Yeah. And well, I mean, since the sexually active since what, 15. That's and cool. Thanks, see, for, thanks for sharing. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, great mental If I image. see a girl use a porta potty or even go to a like a <laughs> gas station bath bathroom and she wants to, you know, you know full on shower. It's fucking gross. I've seen those toilets. <laughs> well, just know the women's one stays pretty clean. 
Uh, and I I've been in there. No, a lot of women don't actually sit on the porta potty. No, the porta potty. The women's yeah. porta potty. The broken yeah. feathers stayed night. We oh, had to give some yeah. one well, up. Well, that's to more the guys. respectful people. Yeah, that's a nice yeah. problem. Yeah, there were hardly any bugs in there. <laughs> hardly. Right. 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 So I want to know, and we can go around with this, but I want to know what your favorite knife to throw is, mm -hmm. and who made it, and why it's your favorite. Oh jeez. And we'll start with danger, obviously. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> um I think everybody knows this. Mm. It's I talk about it all the time. I push in this knife ever since I got my hands on him. I think it's the best all-around knife of all time, and it's the Griffin. Yeah. My made by either Joe Dara or Bill Page. It's a it is the best all-around knife in my opinion. You can do anything with it well. Um, you can. But as far as I'm just a sucker for Bowie's. Bowie is, it, is that a Bowie knife? Is no, that no, 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 no. Yeah, it's, it's something, you know, like, yeah. I love Bowie knives, but they're not the best to throw from the blade for my style. No. So, it just any any big Bowie, it's just so much fun to throw from from the handle. You know, sheath the target stuff is, is my favorite, so. Yeah, well. A, any big, nice Bowie, I'd say. You know, Bill Page makes awesome ones. The, my favorite one that I have is the time I won Broken Feather. I got this uh, mirror-polished uh, Bowie and sheath. Yeah, that I've is seen amazing it. Uh, from Indonesia, made by Harry Houdin, isn't it? No, no it, Dadan Hamdani. Was it last year? It was the year that you took a picture of me that year. Oh, okay, yeah, that's um, nice. But Outlaw and I had the throw off. Yeah, yeah. But uh, that was pretty awesome. That's yeah, thank you. Through, actually. Yes, it was. Yeah, it was really sad to uh, not see Outlaw there this year. That was weird. Yeah. But go ahead. What's yours? I've really whittled my knife collection down. Yeah, I, I used noticed. to have a bunch, and and I've given away the ones I don't throw. I, I, yeah, yeah. But but then it's <laughs> it's I'm not to get off track, but it's it's just what all the all the community shares and 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 uh, yeah. I mean, I was astounded one time when somebody sent me a hundred and fifty dollar set of knives in the mail. I was like, yeah. for nothing. Anyway, I I'd have to stick with it'd be a BMO knife. I really like the sword that I throw, but if I had like. I just have to say my fast draw, my, my Predator Bowie from yeah. from uh, um, BMO. No, from BMO. I just love his knives. I love he's he's a, the fact that it's art. An artisan too, man. No, he's, there's absolutely like he's another. No level. one and, and yeah, no one makes knives like and that. And being an artist, being a magician, being being an artist, I love practical art. Yeah, I love functional art. Yeah, and that's how I see BMO's BMO's. Oh, yeah, man, like, it, it, it would it would it would. Uh, it would be either my predator bowie or the the gift of the spinner the spinner dagger that he sent me. Yeah, because I, I really like the spinner dagger. But I don't know, Bimo's. We all know Bimo's is cool as shit. Oh yeah, and uh, I. He's a good kind of thrower too. To my knife amazing, too. great, amazing. Yeah. Oh yeah, really, and that makes oh, yeah, that makes that he like that, twitches in the knife. Have, that makes it. Have you guys seen a pop that comes out? He, it's like the knife comes relaxed. out of his hand and it's right at the target. I'm yeah, like, it's super relaxed. Anyway, yeah. that's that would be my my predator boy from BMO or either the the uh, the spin dagger. What's the spin dagger? The the real silver spin daggers that he makes. How long is it? I think it's nine inches. It's a I don't bigger one. I think too. I've seen that. I, think. I don't think it's, it's not either. a it's not a spinner hole. It's just no. That. no I'm it's, sorry. It's, it's a dagger made for rotation. Oh, so dagger. it's a, oh. isn't it a Fairborn, uh, Sykes? Fairborn Sykes. Yeah, the Fairborn Sykes. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, yeah, those yeah, are great. Yeah, those, yeah, I love yeah, those yeah. for the He's thumb grip. The the the, uh, the, uh, the last time I ordered from him, he put it in there. He put it in the the package with me, and I was like, oh, right. And you know, I mean, I've seen him make those. Go up. The over. The first down one. one. Down one. Yeah, right there. That's him. Yeah, that's yeah. Him. yeah, those are. It's insane. And you, uh, that came out of a a leaf spring that yeah. he, he, he ground holding incredible. that with his feet with an angle grinder. And yeah, Lee Molson got some of like, those too, right? He's doing some tricks with them. No, he's. I think Lee. He, has he the, may have dirty one, dozen. but he has the magnificent seven. Magnificent. Under yeah, the, the daggers made by uh. Board. Board, right? They yeah, they they look like a switchblade. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, those yeah. are cool. Those are yeah. cool. And actually, Ego was talking to me. He's like, who makes this? Because I want some of them. And I couldn't think of who it was. So now I have that. And, and Bo Shurkin's down below. That actually says Bimbo. They're absolutely 100% oh, the sexiest bimbo. throwing and knives I've ever seen in my when whole life. When he first story. came on Facebook, was it? it said yeah, Bimbo. It so okay, that must be an old picture. Because yeah. I remember a really old video where you're like, I'm sorry, dude, I don't know how to pronounce your name. I think it's Bimbo. Yeah, sure. I mean, that's one of favorite. my biggest pet peeves is not knowing how to. I, I don't want to pronounce people's <laughs> names wrong. <laughs> I don't want to throw it. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. 
I have a particular one yet, so. But you throw the uh, Cold Steel True Flight. I do. Yeah. Sport or uh, yeah, Pro. Yeah, there's Sure the, Flight Pro. Yeah. Multiple yeah. bullseyes today with those. Yes. Yeah, you were throwing For some today. reason, those are mine. Even though they're the the sheep knives, those are my ones. No, they're good. Like, they they're, honestly, they're, they're excellent knives. Dive. Yeah, for, for a beginner knife. They're I good. was about to say, if someone asked me like, how can I get started and not spend a lot of money, I would point them in that direction. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, I, that or I like the Gilhib and eleven inch Tontos. Those are that's, that's what I that's what I that's what they they're good. They're, good. they're yep. heavy. They're heavy for no spin, but they work somehow. They just do it. Yep. Um, and they're cheap, dude. Like you're not gonna get cheaper than fifty dollars for a set of three. You're not gonna find it. No. Um, you're just not. Mm-mm. I really like the uh, the zeals. Yeah. Oh, the book uh, of the Bailey Booker zeals. Yeah, that's yeah. the other yeah. knife. They're, they're always... cool. They look cool too. They have so a cool look to them. It's like a fat grip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It it is. Is. Yes. No. The only problem I have with those is they're stainless. And they're they, heavy. God. They burn, no, they, but they would burr so, so bad. bad. <laughs> just cut your hands right. Oh, well, yeah. the Gil Hibbins yeah. do too. The Gil Hibbins do all that stainless stuff. Does even the stuff that I've gotten from Russia because they all make stainless stuff. It burrs. I mean, yeah. it, it, it's a great so design. You started with Zeal's, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, you and I both got them. We the sort of started around yeah, the yeah. same time. We both got those knives around the same time. Yeah. And yeah, that's what that's what we both threw for a while. So. All right, big guy. What's it, what's it about? Griffin. The Griffin? Yeah, that's not Griffin. But uh, <laughs> besides that, well, uh, four different ways to throw uh, combat. No spin, rotational, half spin, instinctive. You can do anything. Um, I think that's it. Just and you throw the super griffins. One, yeah, the super. Is it thicker? Which are insane. Yeah, yeah. The quarter, quarter inch. inch. Thick. It's oh, holy yeah. shit. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're heavy. I'm listening. Yeah. Yeah. And then I really <laughs> like the uh, beaver tails. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Rob Crozier. Yeah, I was about to say Rob Crozier. Those are cool. I like Sermectical, Sermectical knives. <laughs> like the uh, True Balance. Mm-hmm. I threw only, I threw it twice, I think, once or twice. That I got from you. That's a Dirk. A Dirk? Dirk. That's a Dirk. Look up a Dirk. I thought it was a beaver tail. No. I only got it's, thrown it a couple times and then it's, it's close. in Maddo's museum. It's a wooden handle. Well, the beaver tails are like a big, it's like a big paddle. Shape. Yeah, you brought up the picture. Of hey, don't look up well, our website. Technically, <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole beaver, other beaver thing. Tail, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, what are we going to find, beaver? <laughs> I guess, I guess it could be. Yeah. Well, you're not going right. to find Rob Crozier knives on Google Images. Sure, yeah, that's sure. only Facebook. Um, but his look like a beaver tail. They do. They literally they do look like, like a beaver tail. Like, imagine yeah. that, and then that's it. When I scored yeah. a 222 two, three years ago, dangerous yeah. with them, but that was with the extra five. And then yeah, with the I Griffins, I scored, I tied Chris Davey oh, no. twice at Tracy's throw last year, uh, right uh, right before COVID locked in. Yeah. Like the day before, like the Monday That's after the throw. throw. I got a 227 or something. He got a 227 and then we, we tied on the, this is with the Griffins. And then we tied again, again. And then we had the second tiebreaker. <laughs> yeah. But I, I love how I can no spin those things. You're pretty good at that. I love them. Yeah. You showed up last night and was doing seven meters instantly. That's pretty. <laughs> seven meters is hard. We were talking about that on the car right here is that the skip good. from six meters to seven oh, meters. It's huge. It feels like it's, a mile. It's that 20 foot mark. Right, no, honestly, uh, like six meters, man, well, whatever. That's white, but whatever. whatever. <laughs> on like, the real, like, uh, but, oh, wow, okay. Um, as soon as you go to seven meters, it, I, I don't know if it just gets in my head or what it is. This, I feel like I'm in uh, like, you know, Gladiator time. I was about to say like 400 Roman. BC That's with like this the totally there. distal tapered. You yeah, know, it almost directions. looks like it should be obsidian or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah what break, what it, off and, you know. break it off and I still think that being good. I can't do it. I shake a butt. Don't talk this. What's your favorite? My favorite knife, uh, and it's the one I've used in every single competition I've gone to, is a flying steel starship. Yeah. And uh, once again, I don't really throw. I don't. I'm hesitant to call it a knife okay. because it is essentially a uh, elongated triangle um, with the tip, you know, aligned with the center, which is one of the things I like a lot because my throw is very bullet spin heavy. Yeah. Um, it just is. It just happens that way. Um, I, I can't I can't think about it. If I think about it too much, it doesn't work. So it just it is what it is at this point. Yeah. Um 
Either that or the the shuriken I had mentioned before, the Masubikata, which yeah. come from Iga Chengu. Cool. Um, and with both of those designs, so, okay, I have a problem where I bring those shuriken to competition all the time, and they weigh 65 grams, and then an uh, average competition knife, let's say, for no spin is 250 grams. So, you know, that's like, you know, four or so times yeah. uh, what the weight of those are. And I want people to throw them, and I want people to get into them. And uh, they just give up so fast because it's so different. You have to start from the ground up. Yeah, yeah. Um, we are very different. So Iga and I designed one that is about an inch longer. And it's it, we, we messed with it in CAD and stuff to, to stretch it, right? Um, and it's quarter inch instead of three eighths. Awesome. And it's a little bit longer. And I have one. If we knew that I had cameras, I'd, I'd bring one in and I would have brought it in and show you. But uh, the idea is that it's heavier, it's a little bit longer, so it's not going to twist sideways as much. Have you thrown one yet? Um, I got it yesterday in the mail, oh, and really? I haven't thrown it, and I brought it for us to oh, throw later today. Ooh, so so it is completely virgin and unscathed, yeah. hasn't been thrown. I didn't even stick it in my floor, which I've done maybe a couple times <laughs> while I drink a little bit. Um, <laughs> but it's uh, it, it raises the weight wow, twice as much, um, and <laughs> also they don't cost more for him to make. So if you know you want oh, to, it's the same, yeah. If you want to step into doing that kind of throwing, um, it's it's an easier transition for people who have you know, started out with heavier knives, like like most of us have. <laughs> um, and the, the Starship is just, it's easy. It's like, uh, I think it's easier than an arrow. That's why I stick with it with yeah. competition is because it doesn't have the bulb shape. It doesn't force it to hold you, to hold it a certain way. Less so heavy. if you want to, if you want to hold it deeper, you can hold it deeper one day. If you know you're feeling you want to hold it more closer then, you can hold it. Because me, it's always, my grip's always changing. I, I don't know. It just is whatever I'm feeling. Same. It's very much a feel-based sport, you know. It, yeah. If you can feel it one way one day and w a different way the other day, you know. Sometimes you want to throw it down here. Sometimes you want to raise your elbow all the way up and throw. And uh, and that's how that is. And actually, shameless plug here, but I'm doing a collaboration with Patrick uh, on the Starship, and he and I think like October or November is going to release a uh, exclusive Jacob Craycraft Starship Ooh. design that has Ooh. my year first. That yes. has that has my um, and he's doing it for someone else. I'm not going to leak theirs, but there's there's multiple pro throwers that are going to be doing uh, exclusive designs with them. Um, I'm not going to leak someone else's surprise, either, sure. but I'll leak my own. So, I, what's going to be different about your knife? Um, it is going to be. Uh, I think he's just going to. It's going to be a slightly more premium steel. Um, and it's going to have a, a, a logo uh, that I'm going to design. I've yet to design it because this is just some, it's very new. Um, it's also, it's going to be quarter inch. So it's going to be, it's going to be thicker. Nice. Uh, which more people will like. Sure. I'm fine with the thinner designs because that's mostly what I've found because the Starship was my very, very first pro model knife that I ordered. You got a bunch of them, right? I have 13 of them. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you must I think like you might um, like those. Well, yeah, I like to throw a handful because I hate walking back and forth all the time. You know, right, you may as well. And they don't, you can smack them against each other and spark them and they're not going to burn. Yeah. And that's the other thing is like, I see so many people tape up their fingertips and like, my fingertip is golden and clean, like a little baby's bottom. Look. Always has been, always will be. Uh, uh, everybody kind of knows, but yeah. Flying Steel, Patrick Brewster is the industry standard for, for sure, what for sure. knives should be. And so it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, I, I'm, I don't know the price that he's going to, it's probably not going to be much different. Um, but the only thing is, you know, on the opposite side of the Flying Steel logo is going to be the logo that I create. And I have one in mind that I want to use and it's going to have my signature on it. And uh, it's going to be a limited run type thing, you know, just for funsies, uh, just to release something right around Christmas time, you know, because that's yeah. when, that's when the knife throwing buying happens for sure. people. Because it's a commodity, you know, it's not, it's you know. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, and uh, he's a cool yeah. dude, and he's he's someone I will support for the rest of my life because you know I, I click with him a lot. I, I know, with I know all those people. <laughs> um, and it's uh, it, it'll be good. And uh, you know, if you're if you're serious about throwing, uh, you know, he makes whatever designs. He it might not be your taste. It's not a lot of people's taste, but it's been my taste since I started. And yeah. you know, I've thrown him for two and a half years. Adam yeah, he has Adam with the Java Lance, and uh, he's a great guy and someone that will always. Uh, right, Tadeki. I'll always uh, enjoy talking to, and uh, so Kimberly Mitchell, yeah, with the Telly Bell. Yeah, yeah. Travis. All right, Blade Destroyer. Oh, uh, Travis is a cool motherfucker, man. I I love him yeah. this that's year. Travis. I think that's Kimberly. Yeah. I think it was. All, right. All right, Sam, you're next, man. Oh, uh, right. Uh, you know, I guess I've only there's only two sets of knives I've been really messing with, like. Like a lot, like what I really learned to throw knives on. The first was the DT Comps by Bullseye Blades. 
I mean, and then that was also like, you know, Lauren will buy the knives, and she really started getting to it first, and I kind of followed suit as I, you know, got a little more, got a little better at it. And so DT Contour is my favorite because I like the pistol grip. I like this very center balance. The, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know what uh, words to uh, describe it. Like, you know, how the blade just kind of goes like that, kind of like yeah. rounded. Like, and so that was good for sticking with it. I, I, they were forgetting when I, yeah. when I was wearing, like, I could get sticks in, even if it wasn't straight on for competition. That's great. And that kind of like boosted my confidence. And then as I got better with the handshake grip, they just kind of, you know, guided me along for a while. But now that we have a set of, um, of the Prince Steel One for All, it's like I'm just falling in love with those. Oh, those are amazing. All for yeah. One, sorry, correction. All for One, I've been, and I've been um, learning hammer grip on that, and I've been having yeah. a, a lot of success with it. So nice. much so that I've just kind of switched from um, handshake grip to hammer grip, and uh, it's just a lot of fun. And it's kind of, um, it's kind of shown me that I'm getting better in general. I'm able to understand uh, just throwing more you know regardless of what's in my hand but i just the way they're made and they're just really great and i can no spin them too they're heavy to do that yeah. but they, yeah. they work and it's pretty fun yeah the first yeah. day that we were throwing them at broken feather he was throwing the no spin at like six seven meters oh instantly well, yeah he was going consist- past well, where all still, those lines are but that's a big yeah accomplishment, his, man. That was cool. and they aren't even i mean they're they're supposed to be for everything, hence yeah. the name. Yeah, yeah. But I love that idea too. You know what I mean? It's a nice idea to think of a knife that is very I can't versatile. Can't picture it off the top of my head. He has so many different designs. Can you talk about hawks on this? Is I was gonna a... say your favorite yeah, thing. Of course, I, I actually thought hawk. about that midway through because yeah, Matto Forgeworks hawks are that's hands down. I'm in love. Best, best, best in hands, front hands, hands down, the best you can get. That's I just grabs every time. Warner Langmuller, Langmuller, weighted handles, four hundred dollars a piece. I'm not paying. I can't do. Yeah, yeah, I can't. It, but yeah. he makes the best on the planet. But Matto makes different. extremely affordable, light, cool designs. <laughs> they're beautiful. Yeah, books. and they just, cool. they almost like I was telling Matto at uh, the last broke up there. I almost feel like they're doing the work for me. He's like, well, you yeah. need a good thrower. Matto really Forge works, at. Alex. Matto Forge works. And I'm being facetious. I just my I throw Beaver Bills. Yeah, because they're and Beaver A-T-T-O. Bills. But Matto has got the best. Mm-hmm. Especially mountain man hawks for card cutting. Matto Forge works. They're ridiculous. It's almost cheating. There we go. Can you say that one more time? <laughs> you got it. Forge, as in a, a, a fire forge. Forge works. Yeah. Yep. That's him. Yep. There's our little he's, a cool dude. he's a cool dude. He's a cool dude. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's, he's so cool. Yeah, yeah. He's a guy that is really pretty dedicated to the community yes mm-hmm. he's, he's one of the behind the scenes guys for sure yeah he's one in a million people he's awesome so nice he's like, extremely yeah. talented at right. like everything that he does too. Yeah. 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 Wow. yeah he's crazy. i wish we could find a picture of his uh hawks i know yeah. he never posts that many pictures of his hawks. yeah he's not the best at social media but <laughs> <laughs> we'll give him some love though did they stop? Did Cold Stewart? And I, I, I'm not a hot guy. You know this if you see me throw them. I suck at them because um, I, I don't even own one. Um, <laughs> I just got we got to change that. Yeah, I do. I, I would like to have one. I would like, and I would like to have a Matto. And you know, I was gonna grab one off the fucking price table at Broken Feather, and you grab the one I wanted. Oh, of course, I yeah. grabbed the one. So I grabbed the Shuriken and said, which I also wanted, <laughs> and those have been great. But uh, anyways. Um, what was I even saying? There they are. Oh, there you are. Uh, ah, yeah. Nice. That, the one yeah, I wanted middle. ones. But uh, Cold Steel stopped making the Norse Hawk, didn't yeah. they? No, 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 they no. Didn't. it was the Frontier. Oh, it was the, that's what it was. It was the Frontier. frontier I saw hunt. John Border post um, about yeah, that Yeah, that thing, leave yeah. that up. This, yeah. That one on the top right, yeah. top right, yeah. that is... I like bottom right. Yeah. I've, I've had that one right here ordered for ever since his last throw. This one right here is what I got ordered. That's top left. I mean, it's... The, Top left, yeah. <laughs> Solid tip, yeah. because you want to stick on that That is a mountain man throw. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. perfectly yeah. shaped perfect. for that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he does incredible right. work. But yeah, they stopped making the, the Frontier Hawk, and I know that was incredibly popular with a lot of plurf throwers to modify it and stuff, and I saw it, and I was like... Actually, Joe Dara just posted... Yeah, today or yesterday, there's a site. He was talking about the Norse Hawk, though. That's what I'm The Norse Hawk is the one you're thinking about with the upswept point. Yeah. Uh, The Frontier Hawk is the one that is great. Which, 
a lot of people like to throw those, but you're at a major disadvantage yeah, but, when you're throwing in competition. Because you have an angle like this instead spins. of an angle like that. You're one and a half and two spins. I mean, you got to be dead on. Mm -hmm. and, and the Norse Hawk is just, it's hands down the best design but, because of that upside point. But my point. point to that mm. was, is someone's running a sale of 1999 Norse Hawk right what? now. What? Yeah. They that, go on sale every once in a while. They're usually so about Joe 30. Joe posted yesterday, so it's no, probably no, no, still for on steel. sale at whatever size. Hold up while I order uh, three of them. Yeah. 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 Like I said, I need to really? get into Hawks. I need to get into Hawks because, they, I, you know, you go to a competition, even if it's not your thing, just do it anyway. Others are going to be standing around. Oh, it's like, fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Someone will lend you stuff. Right. Um, Always. I already got custom. I, I can't do any better than the Hawks I got right now. Right. <laughs> as far as custom goes, I don't yeah, know about it. Yeah, but uh my right, favorite knife. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, we're just now to Lauren, okay. <laughs> uh, is the, uh, and I've only got the one that I got from Jacob. I traded him something. I forget what we traded, but that Zatoon ZF1. Oh, ultimate. yeah. Yeah, and I freaking love that thing. It's, like, it's the most aggressive point I think I've seen on anything. So which, which one is it? It's like this. The point on it is literally like... It's, so, it's got yeah. just like the danger dashy, only yeah. even more extreme maybe. Oh! It's like okay. an elongated bladed danger dashy. What's it called? The, the Zytoon. The ZF1 yeah. Ultimate, yeah. I think, or my, it might be the ZF2. There's a few versions of the same design. Are you going to pull it up? No, he's going to pee, I think. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I love that thing. I took it out and like he sent, I, I didn't know what he was sending me. I was just like, just trade me some stuff for whatever it was that he wanted. And uh, so when I got it, it was like some square shuriken, which are awesome. And then this knife, and it's pretty short, and it's pretty thick, and it feels like a lightning bolt when you throw it. Yeah. You're like fucking Zeus. It's like, <laughs> boom! And it hits the target so hard, and like I didn't, I wouldn't have thought previously that my favorite knife to throw would be a no spin knife. but. As I've started learning instinctive half spin, because really until more yeah. recently I didn't know how to do it, and I didn't care, and I never tried, but just like two months ago I started <laughs> trying to figure it out, and it's fantastic for that too. I love the way that it slides out of your hand. Yeah, and obviously I like those straight no spin spines because I throw weird or grip them high, whatever, ever. Yeah. Yeah, everyone's it like, works, hold though. that weird. Yeah, if it works, it works. Um, so I love that thing. I need to order some more of those. So I really like them. But yeah. And then the uh, Lewis Prince knives are my yeah. favorite rotational knives. I switched from bullseye blades to those. Yeah. yeah. Which which bullseye blades were you throwing before? The DT comps. Okay. We have about 10 of them. Do you really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. I bought a bunch of blanks. Well, don't ever get rid of those because, you yeah. know, they'll probably never be made again. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, That's why I bought on, them up. Jeez, you know, please. I know he I know he handed his business over to whoever he trained, but that guy, I don't know. I don't know that oh, guy. Well, well, I, I know yeah. Elliot, is I think making? Elliot Smith yeah, is his last done. name, was trying to order some because he's talking he to me and I was explaining no, to him why good. they were so great. Because he was like, what's, you know, I see a lot of people used to talk about bullseye blades. And I was like, with the, their indexing and their designs, like the little, little. D little small details that he put in. Super detailed. And it made a huge difference, in my opinion, especially as somebody learning to have the little slot where your finger goes, a little spot where your knife, where your thumb goes every single time. will pick up the knife the same way. And also, you know. They were nice steel, and so I was explaining to him why I thought they were so fantastic. And then he went on the website and without talking to anybody, and he ordered some. So I was like, I don't know if the company is still on hi hiatus, or I, I know I know. saw the announcement that somebody was taking over. So I guess that he reached out to Jeremy, because he didn't know what else to do, and got a response that they will be making more. So, but okay. like, I guess that they sent his money back. Well, oh, well, the thing is, though, we don't know this guy. Yeah. And Jeremy had such a really good reputation within the community. He did. And for whatever reason, he decided to step away, and that's fine. But I don't know if it's ever going to be speaking the same of, again. Speaking of uh, stepping away, so do you have your calendar still pulled up? So Danger Fest, and then the rest? We didn't get to Florida yet, either. Oh, I didn't say that. By the way, we, uh, we've we been going for an hour and a half. We've Feel free to skip past this first two posts. That was, that it was a call out. We've got <laughs> we've got two or three more throws this year after your throw. 
There, Goldie's got one. He got boobs and Midnight. October. And then Blade Ace has okay. got another thank one. Thank you, thank you. So, yes. Yes, there was the championship in, in Italy, October 8th, 9th, and 10th. October 15th, 16th, and 17th. It's called Boobs. Do you yeah. remember what that was? An acronym for it's it's a it's actually a fundraiser for breast cancer. breast cancer oh, yeah yeah um, that is Blades Cedar Creek Out Texas something something yeah yeah that, I, I know that much okay. <laughs> it's in Cedar Creek Texas uh, contact uh, Goldie Locks on Facebook if you want more information on that October thirtieth is the second annual Virginia State Knife and Axe Throwing Championships in Richmond Virginia I'm assuming that's hosted that's by the first. Oh. I'm that assuming that's hosted by um. That's not a first. Dan no, Peg. It's not. No, it's I not. think he did a thing on Halloween like two years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, after that is the whoa. This the jumps ahead quite a bit. 2022 no, no. World Bit Axe Throwing Championships in Nova Scotia. Um, that's all that's said there. And um, that'd be fun. Anyone listening to this, if they would like their uh, information about their club, their event coming up. Uh, Blade Ace has got one in August as well. Yeah, I said that. Down in Ohio. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah Chillicothe, Ohio. <laughs> no, yeah. not in Ohio. Chilicothe. She's got another one in Texas. Really? Oh. It's not on the. In August? Are you sure? The one in August is in. Oh, that's is right. In she, Ohio. she already had their. Yeah. She had yeah. her spring one. Come to my, my wedding. Yeah, yes. no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Make, it out, to, yeah. make yeah. it out to Ohio. Make it out to our backyard. It would be. By the way, am I. Gonna throw around you guys still? Yes. Yes. So, right. I, was, I was thinking right. about this though. Like, I would need a wider backboard, okay. or if you guys would hug, maybe or something. Yeah, be cute, uh, we can it? do. We can yeah. very cute. make it yeah. very cute. Yeah. yeah, but um, I mean, you are getting married, so you can be close to each other for a few minutes. Anyway. Yeah, I think yeah. we can manage. All right, All right we'll figure out something. Smells. This is so hot. We'll, uh, <laughs> so maybe hot. we'll maybe we'll uh, when we go back to my place, we'll try to figure out something. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So. uh Anything else, anybody? I got an idea. You could pick her up. I can't like this. She and up. he throws I around can, you like that. I mean, okay. I'm not trying to do anything. <laughs> right. I just need to throw around to somebody, man. Are we getting fancy? <laughs> no, I don't. I'm not cutting anything on your mouth or anything like <laughs> okay. that anymore. I'm good. You do it for me though, right? Sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you know, I'll throw those in your face. Right. <laughs> do it. <laughs> and I'll let you. <laughs> but um. Yeah, uh, thank you all for coming. This means a lot to me. And this is the first official uh, Danger Zone podcast. Um, I have a friend working on some original music for us. Uh, I got some artwork done. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you again. For, uh, thank you, Alex and Clamshell Studios for allowing us well, to do this year. Shout out to Alex because all around his place is bolting clan stickers. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. yeah. And from the moment we showed up, he had no idea who I was. He's the most hospitable dude. I've yeah, seen. he's yeah, a really nice. good dude. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. and I'm very proud of him. What he's doing. This is it's cool. It's fucking, legit. It's, it's, it's legit. Alex. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. Thank, thank you, Alex. Alex. All right. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. See you on the next one. Peace. Peace. Peace.